the next morning, some workmen were giving Oliver a good clean down, whilst he felt his fire being lit, and a man came up to see him. Hello Oliver, my name is Clark Smith. I've been rostered and appointed to be your driver for the duration at Brighton Sheds. Your fireman, Clint, is lighting up your fire. We've just got to check that everything is working, that's all. I hope you'll be okay with that. Driver Clark gave a reassuring smile to Oliver. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, that's, that's fine. Soon Oliver's fire was burning brightly and nicely. Clark carefully put more coal into the firebox and soon Oliver had built up plenty of steam. Driver Clark then slightly opened the regulator and moved Oliver forward a few yards, and then a few yards back. Johnny and Rafferty were watching nearby, but unfortunately, so was Sir Kay. Well done, Oliver. Now take it easy, you haven't run in a while, but you're doing well so far. Thank you, Rafferty. <laughs> That's most appreciated. Yeah, and I bet once you get to work, you can master those wagons easily. I, uh, I hope so. Um, my last experience with it didn't go so well, but I, I realised it was a while ago. Um, maybe um, things might be different here. The tank engine in Pacific felt very pleased with the freight engine, but Sakai still didn't look convinced. In fact, he just plain wasn't convinced. Okay, I'm just going to open up your regulator just a bit more forwards, Oliver, just to see if you can handle light engine speed. Oliver agreed, and driver Clark opened the regulator further. That's it, Oliver. Full power. Full power now. Well done, Oliver. That was splendid. Woo! Well done, Oliver. That was splendid. Now all we have to do is wait for the running foreman to give you some work for the day. Meanwhile, Albert was making his way across the junction towards the shed. Suddenly, he jumped, buckled on the points, and came off the rails. Johnny, Rafferty and Oliver all heard the noise from the junction. Then, all signals went to danger as traffic was halted. What's going on? I don't know. I think something definitely must have happened. Just then, the running foreman came, ironically, running into view and stopped when he reached the engines in the shed. Albert has come off the rails at the junction. The permanent way gang can get him back onto the rails of a breakdown crane, but his front pony truck was damaged, so he can't take the heavy goods to Ashford. Oliver, you're in steam, and you're the only goods engine around. You're going to have to take it. What? You can't be serious. That thing won't take the train. He's not capable of doing so. Well, your majesty, that just shows what you know then, doesn't it? Ah, ah, ah. Don't listen to him, Oliver. You've gone through worse than this, and the rest of us all know you can do it. Um, um, um. All right. Yes, yes, I can do it. Brilliant. Now go and couple up to that train, Oliver. Prove to Sir Kay that he is being a right git, and go to work. Like Rafferty said, you can do it. Well, I still stand by my words. I won't believe it when I see it, because I won't see it at all. But Sir Kay was wrong. With a determined look on his face, raising steam and pumping pistons, Oliver moved over to the train. back down in front of the wagons and was coupled up to the long train of vans, flatbeds and more. Am I supposed to be impressed? Wait for it. Suddenly the signal dropped, the guard waved his green flag from the brake van, Oliver blew his whistle loudly, he span his wheels forward getting grip on the rails and then he set off. Well done Oliver, full power mate. FULL POWER! Come on! Come on! Move forward! Move forward! Let's go! Let's go! Good luck, Oliver! Have a safe trip! Sir Kay was shocked by what he was seeing, 
as Oliver puffed down the main line and out of sight with the long, heavy train. Well, well, Sake. He is quite the key one, isn't he? Sake said. Oliver was puffing through the beautiful countryside, taking in all the sights and sounds that surrounded him. He was working hard and fast, pulling the long, heavy train towards Ashford. Train spotters on the line side were very happy to see an engine like Oliver, and they waved at him as he passed by. Oliver felt very happy. The long, straight track with the humming rails really did set the scene for a good run and Oliver no longer felt terrified, and instead felt much more content when he was pulling his train. Oliver made good time when he got to Ashford, and later that evening, Oliver was making his way back to Brighton with a few wagons and a brake van behind him. When he got back and put the wagons into a siding, he was surprised to see that there was a spare berth in the shed, waiting for him, in between Johnny and Nicholas. Hello, Oliver. I hope you had a good run. Please, come and join us. You must be bursting your safety valve for a rest. I, I certainly do want to rest, but I, I, I don't think that's a good idea to break a safety valve, Nicholas. <laughs> Not literally, Oliver. Now why don't you get in here and ease those axles? So Oliver backed down onto the shed and took a yawn. I take it you got there on time. Sounds like it was a real successful run. We heard how you were working to keep the wagons in control. Oh, no, 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 no. I was, uh, I was tired for the journey back then, uh, b b before it was okay. Well, working on the railway has never been easy. But as a young engine, Oliver, you have plenty of energy within you. And you managed to use that energy to get a heavy train to Ashford. On time, I hear. So I think we should all blow our whistles and say well done to Oliver, the engine of the hour. All the engines whistled loud. The noise was fantastic. Some of the crews even covered their ears. And even Sir Kay was whistling. Once the noise had died down, and the engines were cooling down their boilers, Sir Kay spoke up. Uh, <clears throat> is it okay if I say something to you, Oliver? Oh God, you're not saying even more harsh things, are you? Perhaps along the lines of queer looking, unusual sounding, lazy goods engine? Nothing of the sort. Oliver, I would like to apologise for my attitude earlier on today. If I have learned anything from engines like Nicholas and Johnny, nothing is at all what it seems to be at first glance. And all those things I have said about you earlier on today was just judging a book by its cover. Which is the wrong thing to do. And I would like to say that I am never going to treat you like that again. And considering you managed to pull that heavy trade so efficiently, I in a way, respect you, and hope we can make amends. Um, what does that mean? It means to compensate for any earlier injury or insult, young one. Well, in that case, I will. I mean, be okay with it. Well, that's just spectacular. Well done, both of you. Truly, this is a marvellous feat to witness. Well, we can definitely all be satisfied with this conclusion, I think. All the engines agreed, and now a new friendship had been formed, and because of this, Shed Number 75A was a much more calm and happier place to live on British Railways. 
but Nicholas didn't necessarily think this was true. Something didn't feel happy. Something didn't feel normal. Something was wrong. But what was wrong? What was burrowing at the back of Nicholas's mind? Did he know something that the other engines didn't know? Well, I'm afraid we won't find out for some time. But for now, the engines at the shed were all at ease, and all rather pleased with themselves, as they drifted off into slumber.